Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome back to this series on building a useful set of Terraform modules. And today, I will be making changes to fix issues I found in the RDS setup. And I will also be making changes to make my ECS Terraform module take advantage of better protection and handling of traffic inside the ECS infrastructure. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. The first thing that I need to fix is the automated password that I generate for my RDS database. The Git repository of my RDS Terraform module is what I have loaded on my VS Code session right now. So for a start, let me switch to my VS Code terminal and run git pull. And now back to my VS Code Explorer, I'm going to go ahead and open my main.tf and then head to the block for my random password resource. I will update the override special property in here. What I will do is add all the special characters on the string and then make sure that this string does not contain the forward slash, the at sign, the quotes, which is not there, and the space character. And now let me go ahead and push this change. So I'll head to my VS Code terminal. And now that my change is pushed, let me go ahead and create a version tag to prepare for the release. Now, let me head to my browser and then access my GitHub account and then open my RDS Terraform module repository and head to the releases section of this page and then go to tags, click the tag that I just created and then all the way to the right of this page, click create release from tag and then scroll all the way down this page and then click publish release. And now let me switch to my terminal and then cd to the directory of my ECS project repository. And then while I'm here, I might as well run git pull to fetch all changes to my local machine and then create a new branch for today's changes. And now I'm going to launch my VS Code from here. And in here, I'm going to expand the DB directory and open my Telegram configuration file. And then I'm going to change the version that my source is pointing to. The next set of changes that I would like to implement has to do with the network setup for my ECS infrastructure. So to start, let me switch to my terminal and then head to my ECS Terraform module repository. And then I'm going to run git pull in here and launch my VS Code. On this repository, I'm going to go ahead and open my main.tf and I'm going to head to my ECS service block. And in here, I will add the network configuration property. The first property inside this block is subnets. The value will be derived from a data reference that points to a list of subnets associated to a VPC. So what I'm going to do is head to my data.tf and define this reference. Remember that one of the key motivations for creating this module is for reusability. This module does not know of any VPC at the moment. So I will change this by defining a new variable for the VPC ID. So let me head to my variables at TF. I'm going to set the default value of this variable to null, which means I'm allowing resources to be created with the default VPC resource. And this time, I'm going to switch to my main.tf and then all the way to the end of this file, I'm going to define a resource block to pull my default VPC. So now back to my data.tf. On the values property, I will set the VPC ID based on what is passed on the VPC ID variable. But I also want to evaluate this VPC ID in such a way that if the value is null, I will pull out the VPC ID from my default VPC. And now that I've completed my data reference, let me head back to my main.tf on my ECS service block and plug the data reference in here. And now, in order to set control and protection on this service, I will add some firewall mechanism by adding a security groups property. So what I will do as the status quo is to create a default security group resource. So I'll head all the way down this file and create my new security group.
I need to set the appropriate VPC ID on this one and use the same logic that evaluates the VPC ID variable and assign the appropriate ID on the property. What's missing on this resource is the important component, which is the ingress block. I will set this up to allow inbound access only through the container port from within the VPC that this resource is part of. The CIDR block property here should point to the VPC CIDR block. I can easily derive the value for my default VPC, but what about the case when the VPC ID is provided? What I can do in this case is define a data reference that will pull the VPC resource based on what the VPC ID variable is. So let me head to my data.tf. And then at the end of this file, and now that I have a data reference to the associated VPC, the problem I have here is that if the VPC ID variable is not provided, this block will fail. In order to stop that from failing, I will add a count property that will determine whether this resource is created or not based on the value of the VPC ID variable. So it will look like this. Now, let me head back to my main.tf and update the CIDR blocks property. Notice that I have a reference in here for a local parameter called main container port. This is the same container port that will be accessed by the load balancer. So if I head back to my ECS resource and on the load balancer block, I will change the source value of the container port to come from the same local parameter. And for consistency, I will replace the container name to main container name. And to align everything up, I will go to my locals.tf and replace the local parameter names in here. And I also need to update the source of my main container port. And now back to my main.tf and back to the network configuration property on my ECS service. I can go ahead and update the security groups property and point it to the new security group resource that I just created. This network configuration property is actually optional, but it is required if the container network used for the orchestration is AWS VPC. And this is what I want to use in my infrastructure by default. Before I make the necessary changes to set the network configuration dynamic, I need to head to the ECS task definition resource block. And in here, the network mode property is set to a default value of bridge, which is the default container network mode for Docker. I will change this hard-coded value and define a variable source. And then head to my variables.tf to define this. And then I'm going to define a default value for this and set it to AWS VPC. And then back to my main.tf. And then back to my network configuration block. I will set a dynamic block on my network configuration. And then I will move the properties of the block inside a content block. And for the for each property inside this dynamic block, I will evaluate the value of the network mode variable. If it is AWS VPC, I will set a list with one element. Otherwise, I'll set an empty list. And that's all the changes that I need. Now, let me head to my VS Code terminal and push my changes through. And now I'm going to set version tags in preparation for creating a release. And now let me switch to my browser and head to the repository for my ECS. And then go to the releases section of this page. And then go to tags. Click the tag that I just created, and then all the way to the right of this page, click Create Release from Tag. And then scroll down this page and click Publish Release. And now let me switch to my terminal and switch back to my ECS project repository and then launch VS Code from here. Notice that I'm still on the same branch that I created earlier when I implemented the fix for my automated password generation. But this time, I'm going to implement the necessary changes for the core ECS component on this project. So let me head to my VS Code Explorer, expand the ECS directory, which is the component that I need to update, and then open the Telegram configuration file. If I scroll all the way to the top of this file, the first thing that I need to change is the source version of my Terraform block. And then I'll head all the way down to my inputs block. And on the container definition input, 
I don't need to define post port for the port mappings for my WordPress container. So I'll get rid of this. I need to modify a property inside my target group resource to allow with the new container network mode. With AWS VPC network mode, containers become accessible through IP address instead of instance ID. And so let me head to my VS Code Explorer, expand my load balancer directory right here. I'm going to open main.tf and head over to that block where my AWS target group definition is. And on this resource, I'm going to add a property called target type and then source the value from a variable. And then I'm going to open my variables.tf on my load balancer component and define the new variable. I'm going to set a default value for this variable and set it to IP. And at this point, I've done all the changes that I need to achieve today. So let me head to my VS Code terminal and prepare my session for Telegram run. And now that my AWS credentials, my default workspace, and my Teragrant integration key variables are set, let me go ahead and run Teragrant plan on my entire infrastructure stack. The plan looks good. So let me go ahead and run apply. Teragrant apply is successful. Now I can verify if my WordPress application is still accessible after my changes. So let me switch to my browser and access my WordPress website. And that still works. And that's it for today. On the next episode, I will make the necessary changes to move my load balancer resources into a reusable set of registered Terraform module. In the meantime, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe.